5150, the lovely city of Na, Pamon Na. Uh, don't get me started. Here's the deal. Back in 1983, let's talk about 1983 real quick. Let's remind the, let's remind the audience about that. Under Reagan and Reaganomics, okay? Country was in recession. All major cities, including, I would say New York would be one of the main ones, uh, bankrupt. Law enforcement was the real law enforcement. In other words, there was no, none of this. So you got the nice beatings. Everything was chaos. Everything was madness. Everything was gray. Everything was dark. It was, everything was dismal. The only way you survived was by having either a strong family unit or having a strong family unit from the streets. New York, Nella, El Sereno, same environments. 1983, before the internet, I received a cassette demo tape from a band, from a friend of mine, which we know now as Dan Loker, from a band called Agnostic Front. One of the most frightening, definitely horrific things I've ever heard, and one of the most enlightening, inspirational, groundbreaking, and a pigment of light in that fucked up era. You think Trump era is bad? Back in that day, it was very bad. Let me introduce this legendary godfather, but I like to call him just the real deal. That's all that he is. Roger Merritt? Yes. Hey, thank you, man. Thanks for that intro. And you know, I, I love the, how you described it, because I always describe it exactly the same way. It's the truth. I, I describe it exactly the same way, and out of all that horrific... Um, ugliness and dark in those dark ages. Look at all the great shit that came out of it. Absolutely. All the great stuff that came out of New York. Just in general, like your Andy Warhol's, your art, your music. It was a really dark, gray area, but it was just some something amazing in a creativity way. You know that that really just sprouted out of all these bands and all kinds of stuff. And a lot of it had to do with the Reaganomic years, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, a lot of it had to do with the real deal yeah. that leaving your home, if you're lucky to get a plate of food, then you had to deal with the cops or the gangs. But in some cases, the gangs actually saved your life because Absolutely. they gave you that rough edge to survive. Let me talk about 1984, Victim in Pain. You've read it before. If you haven't, you know what? Go back in your history. Go on Wikipedia and all that. That was an inspirational record because, again, not only did you break down barriers, not only did you throw out there the social anguish and the, the, the fight, but at the same time, man, the hardcore genre, that's where it spawned the whole unity, the whole united front. Yeah. And at the same time, what a great time, man. No money. No one was making money. There was no internet. There was none of this fucking fame bullshit. None of this restrictive shit. Talk to me about that era. The reason why we're talking about it, because finally it's been documented in the book. And before you start, let me say this. All these so-called music hysterians who give you the long list of inspirational groundbreaking bands, you do get credited, but not as you should. I've I said totally this before. Agree with you, man. I totally agree with you. We've talked about this when yeah, you were on the have. show. We have talked about it. For some reason, they just want to skip and overlook my band or bands from that, that, that little tiny era, you know? They'll give credit a couple big ones, and that's about it. You know, Misfits and jumps to whatever else it wants to jump to, you know? But um, that Victim and Pain, 1984, was something else. And just like you said, you know, I wanted to bring everybody united. You know, I wanted to get everybody to stand together to fight oppression together because we, we were just doing that, fighting oppression, but it didn't make any sense doing it divided. So it was about getting the people together and, hey, you know, let's do this together. Let's right. move forward. Do you think that historians are just in general? Because, I mean, look how everything's just politically correct now. So-called yeah. so called subversive music, so the so-called revolution... This has been fucking neutered. Do you think that history, these people that write history, kind of tend to not give you the full credit because of the power of Agnostic Frank in that time? And let's remind everybody, you're accused of being fascist. You're, you're all skinheads. You were, you were being totally misclassified by the British European fascist movement, the whole skinhead movement. You know how it is, dude. Every, the American paranoia. But he, you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. Funny you bring this up. Is um, <clears throat> we've, We're that band that's been, that people wanted to see just go down in some way or somehow, somehow. But you know what? Well put. 
we fucking never went down because the people that knew us and met us and, you know, came to our shows and kind of, you know, and, and were a part of it, realized that this is something genuine. This is bullshit when other people are trying to bring this this thing down when this thing is just a, a, a force of power that's trying to do the right thing. And it's been, we, we're like the, we're totally cruci- the crucified band of anything, you know what I mean? Like, we're the band that everybody wants to destroy and here we are today here we are today you know you can destroy us and you won't because you know we're, we're, we're talking about real shit you know well, what I mean you know I always like to say that history really does depict who the real survivors and the real deal are if you survived economics if you survived that whole New York but catastrophe think of, just think about this you know, like if, Giuliani in the yeah, 90s yeah just think about like you, you know, mentioned like let's talk about Sex Pistols for example it's all about getting the name spelled right and just get it out there who cares you know but if the Sex Pistols were a band today they were I mean they were an incredible man 1976 groundbreaking you know change change music change rev, rev- <laughs> Revolutionized music. Now today, if they were a band, tomorrow they will they will be destroyed. The internet would just destroy. Because we come from an era where politically incorrect was correct. That's right. And today, it is fucking hard as fuck. We come from an era, and and we can say this because we're from that era, and we're not bashing. Because let me say this straight. Because I always come off as being the dick, just because I speak the truth, and I am a dick. But I'll just say this: for every so-called revolution, there's an undercurrent, and that's the real undercurrent. Let's mention this: Agnostic Front. Aside from being at the head front of that, and you spawn genres of bands and all that, you still represent what New York's about because New York no longer exists. Absolutely. If you go, if you read, if you read, yeah, if you read, I mean, look, look at my lyrics in Victim of Pain, United Blood, like we were just talking about that, and go to New York City and you're like, what the hell is this guy talking yeah, about? Right? It's, it's nice you know what, it, it's not my party anymore, you know? Those parties do exist. Those lyrics are still as relevant in other places all over the world. Like, you, you go to Russia, go to South America, Mexico, go to, America, you know what I mean? Yeah. The people are still living that hardcore pressure. I mean, you know what happened in New York City was going on with every, Every major city is gentrification, and they used the punk scene to gentrify the fucking areas, and then they just all moved in, and that was it. Yeah. Your book, what finally inspired you to get it done? We've talked about this five years ago, but this is. I finally, I I know it's been going on since 1999. I finally figured out I had to get it done. That's it. I really, yeah, I had to just get it done. The truth is, the most biggest inspiration for me to finish this book were my children. You know, because <clears throat> I, I did it for them. I mean, only it was, it was important for them to know the struggles because they have a good life. You know, they, 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 they live in a suburban home and it's not New York City. They're not squatting. They're not in a van. They're not dealing with gangs. They, they have no idea what any of that is, you know. You know There's nothing wrong with that because that's what a parent's supposed to do. Make, right, their, exactly. make their children so in a better want, I just want to know their struggles, their father's struggle as an immigrant coming from Cuba to America, all the stuff that I had to deal with to move forward to where they are today and I want them to understand and most importantly their kids and then their grandkids you know I wanted to leave my my story there for them to know you know pretty much the, you know the struggles of us to to have this American dream or if you want to call it whatever you know it really is an American dream and not yeah. only that but here's the deal you touched on this all over the United States, the capitalists have won, whether you want to admit it or not. But there are regions of the world that are really f- in that struggle where music touches their lives and helps them survive. Let me, let me give you a background. The United States Marine Corps, you know, I don't want to mention the brigades. I don't want to get them in trouble. But uh, they listened extensively to the Agnostic Front before they went on ops and be- or when they were relaxing, having income, incoming, listening to Agnostic Front, then incoming coming in. The music, whether it's from in the 80s to now, has always given that sense of stability and real world inspiration to get through whatever the shit you're getting through hence in the book do you talk about where you're at now as to where you were because it's well documented what's well documented how frightening an agnostic front was absolutely i talk you know i go from that i mean it's it's amazing i mean my book is pretty much four different stories me as an immigrant coming from cuba to america and my struggles as an immigrant in the neighborhoods, my own struggles with my abusive stepfather, blah blah blah. I meet the I meet people of my likes, 
New York hardcore punk scene, you know what I mean? That's the second chapter, you know? Then I go into a third dark, <coughs> excuse me, third darker chapter, you know, unfortunately, my prison era, you know? Then the fourth, which is the light, is like, you know, there's only three ways to get out of that era, you know, or where the direction I was moving in. It's either in a body bag or back doing the same old fucking shit, getting back and caught up in it, or just moving, you know, learning from what your mistakes are, just sitting back, thinking about everything, where everything is, and, and getting the best out of it, the most darkest moments, and that's what I did. I got the best out of the darkest moments of my life, and I moved forward. And that's what